Countless champions have been crowned throughout the history of competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! But what about the underdogs, the dark horses, the decks that upon first glance make you question everything you thought you knew about the game? In this series, both MBT and myself will be showcasing some of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s wackiest unsung heroes. Each episode will feature new decks, new strategies, and the results will be unpredictable. You've seen the history of Yu-Gi-Oh!, but this is the history of Jank. If you want 5% off any singles or sealed product, click the affiliate links in the description and use code SEMO5. And clicking the TCG Player affiliate link before you shop helps support us to provide you with more amazing content. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> We're not exactly there yet. Sorry, folks. I promised I would be swole by the next time you saw me in here, and... Uh, we've still got a ways to go. By the end of the series, for sure. So, we are back in the jank tank for the first time in... I don't remember how long, and we are playing this. What should we call this deck? Well, Psychic doesn't really do it justice. Uh, Mind Master OTK is close. But I think I'll throw the playoffs fans in the audience a bone and just call it... Bullshit. This is one of the most frustrating decks in Yu-Gi-Oh!'s history, and it's shocking that there is just not a lot of documentation about just how powerful this strategy was. In fact, it took until late 2011 for Mindmaster to even be banned. Now, why is this? Well, it turns out that one of the card's flagship monsters, Krebens, was currently wreaking havoc alongside Emergency Teleport in a much different deck, one that has cast a shadow over the history of Jank. For that reason, people weren't really exploring its applications with Mind Master specifically, but make no mistake, this card is crazy. Once per turn, oh, wait, sorry, I read that wrong. Many times per turn, you can pay 800 life points and tribute a psychic type monster except for Mind Master to specially level 4 or lower psychic type monster from your deck and face up attack position. You may think, okay, well, it's still at most 7 times per turn? Well, not so. Brain Research Lab, a card released in 2009, says not only do you get a double summon for a psychic monster, you don't have to pay life points to activate these monsters' effects. Mind Master plus this card plus any additional psychic was essentially an OTK from any board position. How would you accomplish it? Well, with the Mind Master on field, you would cycle through a ton of small monsters in your deck. You can bring them back with stuff like Telekinetic Power Well, but you don't even really need to. If you've got enough on your side of the field already, you can use the Mind Masters to cycle through Destructotron, clearing your opponent's entire back row, before going for 3 Power Injector, a card that permanently pumps Psychic-type monsters by 500 even if it leaves the field until the end of the turn, Psychic Snail, which can give some individual monsters 2 attacks, and copies of Reinforced Human Psychic Borg. This card's not fantastic, but can get up to 25 on its own, and 3 2500 attackers that are all boosted by 1500 by Psychic uh, Injector, and all able to attack two times is enough to beat pretty much any board state. What makes matters worse is that this deck was exceptionally cheap, with the exception of Reinforced Human Psychic Borg, which I think is an ultra rare and honestly could be replaced by any psychic monster with a halfway decent attack stat, and Psychokinesis, an ultra rare that is honestly not even necessary for the deck to function. The only expensive card in here is Emergency Teleport, a card that you might have anyway if you were playing one of the one meta decks during this time period. Before I get into the individual cards, I do want to let you know I know this deck looks beatable. That is the most frustrating thing about this strategy. You read the cards, you look at what they do, and you think, no, 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 I can interact with this. There are going to be scenarios in which I'm able to deploy a powerful trap card and prevent my opponent from going off. I promise you, that is a pipe dream. This is one of the most robust OTK strategies in the history of time. Hopefully the individual card descriptions will explain why. First up is Destructotron. Now, during the end phase, if this is the only psychic type monster you control, you destroy it. That will never happen. You can pay a thousand to target a set spell or trap your opponent controls and destroy that target. Because this is not once per turn, and because you will always have infinity life points because of the Brain Research Lab, you can use this to clear the entire back row. Now, notably, Brain Research Lab isn't just free, it puts counters on it, and you take a thousand per counter if Brain Research Lab is destroyed. You might think something like a Mystical Space Typhoon could take advantage of this and pop you for 8,000, but you can go into Destructotron before you even commit to the Brain Research Lab by using Mind Master plus one additional monster to do so. That way you pay a meager 3,000 to ensure you don't 
don't take eight later. Three copies of Dr. Cranium. This card's not great, but it does search Mind Master. And at this point in time, outside of Dad exactly, there wasn't a lot that people were doing in terms of destroying set monsters without attacking. Triple Krebens. This does everything for the deck. It is a monster that sticks on field, which is necessary for Mind Master. It is infinitely blockable if you have Brain Research Lab up, affords you a ton of time, and it's a tuner, which allows you to unlock your extra deck. Triple Power Injector. This card allows you to pay 600 life points to have all face-up monsters on the field that are psychic type gain 500 until the end of the turn. Psychic Commander, a level 3 star tuner, comes in for very specific synchro lines, and uh, sorry if you live in one of the nations that will cause this to be demonetized. Triple Psychic Snail. This card is not great, but does have a big attack stat and allows you to target a monster you control and it can attack twice over the course of one battle phase. Depending on how many monsters you have, you may only get to activate this one time, but that's still enough. Three Reinforced Human Psychic Borg honestly could be any psychic type monster that's got four stars and a halfway decent attack stat. And Mind Master himself, 800 life points, one tribute, except Mind Master to special a level four or lower psychic type monster from your deck in face up attack position. For the spells, we've got Triple Brain Research Lab, Triple Emergency Teleport, Giant Trunade, Heavy Storm, Monster Reborn, one for ones times three, two Psychokinesis, this is a catch all removal spell, Triple Telekinetic Power Well, this is a double Monster Reborn, and Triple Terror. For me. In the extra, we've got a bunch of monsters we won't summon, but notably Dark Strike Fighter is great for closing out games in which you don't have enough damage to pierce through your opponent's monsters, but you do have a lot of monsters on your field after the conclusion of your combo. Goyo Guardian, which can get those pesky monsters that sit in defense position and wreck your combo out of your hair, and something like Stardust Dragon to prevent you from getting blown out. One final thing before we jump into the game, because I realize this might not be common knowledge. Mind Master has an errata. I know you're probably scratching your head and looking at this card saying, why? would you errata this but not put a hard once per turn on the card and the answer to that is that 2009 was a different time no the text that was added to this card was except mind master originally mind master could tribute itself to fill its cost and of course that is a very powerful ability to give any card let alone one that can activate 10 times in one turn the original japanese printing of this card allowed you to use itself and a db entry was generated the same week of release that eroded it to include except mind master we'll be playing with a pre-eroded version for this game but keep in mind it actually doesn't matter too much no matter how you slice it a card that can activate this many times in one turn is going to be broken. Ah, we finally did it. We are free of the jank tank for at least one more episode. And we're gonna try to make that be the case for as long as possible. Now, I don't know how long it's going to be considering the deck Joseph is playing this episode. How do I let him talk me into this? But here we are playing plants, I guess. I don't really exactly know what else to call this, but around this time when we're in like the post-synchro era, a lot of interesting plant cards were released and sort of spawned this like, control plant style of deck centralizing around Phoenixian Cluster Amaryllis. Now, a lot of you may notice that this card is actually banned and was banned rather recently in modern Yu-Gi-Oh around 2019-ish, I believe, because it facilitated an FTK. So the nice thing is we're both playing FTK enabling decks, but I think Joseph's might be a bit more salient to the actual time. So Amaryllis, if you've never seen it before, is a rather fascinating card because it can only be special summoned with its own effect or the effect of Phoenixian Seed, which you can just sack it to special summon this card from your hand. I like how it doesn't even like Lone Fire Blossom for it. It just has to be from the hand, but whatever. If this card attacks, it's destroyed after damage calculation, which is terrible. And if this card you control is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, inflict 800 damage to your opponent. The first effect triggers the second. And during your end phase, you can remove from play a plant type monster from your grave to special this card from your graveyard in defense position. So the nice thing about this card is that it's a constantly recurring threat and while it does get special summon in defense Which really sucks obviously later on in tandem with cards like topologic bomber dragon and some other cards It forms an infinite loop because it doesn't have a hard once per turn That's gonna be the theme of this episode And so back then you just had a constantly recurring 2200 that would also be able to deal damage But also be putting a clock on your opponent and so the rest of the deck sort of centralizes around this concept And so we're gonna see how well that works Work. So we have three Cluster Amaryllis, three Titanial, which you may know from the Plant Focus decks, just a fantastic card, three Botanical Lion, which gains 300 attack for each plant you control. Pretty good, because if you can start swarming the field, this thing can get very big very quickly. One copy of Dandelion, two Lone Fire Blossom. I believe this was semi-limited at the time, otherwise I don't know why you wouldn't play three. Three Lord Poison is pretty cool, because this card can actually resurrect any of our plants. So we can just get back like a Titanial, I mean Dandelion, if we have to wall up, like that could matter. The two Phoenixian Seed and three Rigorous 
Reaver. This is like a card that feels like it has some potential, but just really didn't do all that much. On flip, each player discards one card, which is good for being able to get any of our plants into the graveyard, such as Amaryllis. We can bring them back with like Miracle Fertilizer. And then if this card served by Battle of the Monster destroyed, it loses 500 attack and defense. So the last part of the effect kind of doesn't matter. It's more so the flip each player discards a card is very interesting. The spells, three Miracle Fertilizer. This card is actually pretty strong. Once per turn, you can target a plant in your grave. Special Summon it. You can Normal Summon or set the turn that you do that. And if a monster Special Summon by this effect leaves the field, destroy this card. So this card just allows you to constantly bring back your large plants at the you know expense of not being able to Normal Summon. But like, who cares? If you load up the graveyard with plants, you're not going to have to anyway. Two copies of Thorn of Malice. I got to be honest, I don't know why this deck is playing this. This card seems terrible. A plant monster gains 600 attack when it's equipped with this. It does piercing and then also the attacked monster loses 600 attack and defense after damage calc and then an opponent's monster that battles with the equipped monster cannot be destroyed by battle. Just a strange card. Two foolish burial. We're playing plants. This makes sense. Two trade in because we're playing six level eight so I guess we can just dig deep into our deck. We also want these in the grave kind of so like that works too. Card destruction for a similar reason as well as heavy storm. Triple polynosis. This is actually a fantastic plant focused counter trap that when a monster would be normal or special summon or a spell or trap card is activated tribute a plant monster negate the summon or activation and if you do destroy that card so it's basically like solemn judgment but for plants which is nice two copies of plant food chain this card is so weird. You give a plant 500 attack by equipping this card to it. And if this card is destroyed by a card effect while equipped, you can target a plant in your grave and special summon that target. So that's pretty cool because it allows you to just constantly be recurring, but it just has a very strange activation condition for you to be able to do so. Triple needle bug nest to be able to fill up our graveyard with plants and a call of the haunted. Gotta be honest, we're probably losing this one. I do not feel like we are going to be able to win, especially going up against a pseudo FTK OTK deck. I think this deck has a lot of resilience, but I think Joseph's deck is just a little bit too fast for us, but who knows, right? Anything's possible. It's the history of Jank. We are playing Jank and that works in our favor. So ladies and gentlemen, let's not make you wait any longer. It's time to duel. How do you do it, buddy? How is it that like every time I get out of the tank, you somehow convince me with your magic that, you know, I should play like some OTK FTK deck and you should just play something that has zero chance of what I don't know how you do it. I just don't understand. <laughs> I think you're giving my deck a little too much, uh, a little too much credit. I mean, when has Mind Master been good? You know, I can't... it's it never topped. It must be terrible. You're it's right. all cope, right? It's all cope. It's 100% <laughs> cope. Mind Master is a uh, interesting enigma of a card that was never actually realized. And I'm hoping that this episode will continue that trend and it's just all hype and just completely bombs and that I don't have to go back in the jank tank, which you're not even in when <laughs> I finally win, by the way. Okay. Whatever. In but. my defense, uh, it's been 10 years since I had to pull out the jank tank. I, I'm sure Fair. it's around here somewhere. <laughs> Whatever. Well, let's get into it. Let's hope that you're going to have to force you to find it for next week. Let's shout the patron. It is conservative MBT fan. I mean, buddy, they're just from all over the spectrum for uh, you. You know, you know, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of Reagan, and uh, <laughs> I am just going to trickle down all over Simo after this one. All right, let's go ahead and call that number. You got the fingers up. Oh, I got him. All right, I'm going to go with even. It is even. I picked eight I, I, for eight hundred. <laughs> 800. I was expecting you to do the uh, peace signs for Nixon since you have a conservative That's MBT fan. That would have been very yeah. funny. Yeah. I, yeah, too thoughtful. I edit guess, that in but, post. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at least I get to go first. So uh, I will have some chance to be able to beat this deck. And uh, we're hoping that is going to be enough. Good luck, buddy. Good luck to you, too. Oh! <laughs> wow. The right. best part about this deck is like, I have no idea how I'm actually going to beat this. So, uh, all right. Well, let's start off with a normal summon of Phoenixian Seed. Gotcha. Now this card allows me to send it to the graveyard to special summon an Amaryllis from my hand, which I just so happen to have. That's pretty good. Yeah, this is an FTK enabler that's banned, just like Mind Master, right? I'll set one and pass. What could possibly go wrong? Um, I'm gonna activate Terraforming. Is that okay? Sure. All right, I will grab Brain Research Lab. Nothing could possibly go wrong with Brain Research Lab. Uh, I'm going to Normal Summon Dr. Cranium. Fantastic card name. That's fine. Uh, I'm going to activate Psychokinesis, targeting your back. I will chain it. It is Needlebug Nest. Ooh, I'm in. <laughs> so Let's I will, see what we got here. I will mill five. I don't know what I'm trying to mill, and I don't think it matters, but continue. I'm probably dead oh. here. 
Oh, Amaryllis is kind of interesting here. I see the play. All right, I'll take the thousand. So Amaryllis is during your end phase? Yes, unfortunately. I can go for it. I just want to know. I, I'm trying to figure out how much damage I can do to you. I mean, if you have it, aren't I just dead? Isn't that funny? The answer is no. <laughs> Uh, oh, fantastic. <laughs> so the Mindmaster FTK isn't an FTK at this stage in Yu-Gi-Oh! It's an OTK. And the monsters that you have on field matter. So it is just going to be a difference of how much I fear the cards that you have. And the frustrating part about this, if I had Psychokinesis your monster, I could have easily done it but I was more scared okay. of the back row being something chainable. Which it was chainable. Yeah, I thought it was going to be a freaking bottomless trap hole, all right? <laughs> <sighs> I'm going to activate Brain Research Lab and pass. Really? Yeah. Okay. I'm... Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I just realized Brain Research Lab gives you an extra normal? Please tell me you're joking. Oh, you're fucked, buddy. Here we go. I uh was about <laughs> to say, I'm like, this is the combo. How am I not dead? All right, so... <laughs> For those of you who are unfamiliar, Brain Research Lab, I guess, gives you another normal. <laughs> News to me. For those of you who are unfamiliar, like the person playing the deck, go okay, on. Okay, well, this was historically used in, like, Ritual Beasts as a set rotation target, but it also means that you don't have to pay the cost for your Psychic-type monsters, uh, which I will not be doing. We're going to normal summon a Power Injector here. Uh, you know, part of me just wants to just go because, you know, you passed the turn, <laughs> but yeah, I'll allow it, buddy. Go ahead. I'm going to activate Emergency Teleport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, this card was at three at the time, as was Mindmaster. So Mindmaster, if you've never read it, says I can pay 800 and tribute a Psychic type to specially level four or lower Psychic type monster from my deck and face up attack. So we'll do that with Cranium. We are going to go uh, Mindmaster. Not having to pay the cost because of Brain Research Lab. Mindmaster. Uh, Krebens. 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 And this is the card that could have eaten your back row, Destructotron. Which is actually like a neat card. It's not bad. Uh, pow uh, power Injector. Uh, I'm going to trigger this Power Injector. Uh, we'll just put a token up here to denote how many Power Injector activations I've done this turn. Uh, power Injector. Do it again. And this isn't monsters you currently control. It's Psychics Forever. Uh, we'll go Commander and Cranium. We'll activate this third power injector that's already on field. And now we will go reinforced human psychic Borg. Reinforced human Hold psychic Borg. We'll go this Borg to the grave for psychic snail. We'll trigger the effect of psychic snail to make this Borg able to attack twice. We'll go into another Borg. And we will go into another snail. Trigger the snail so that this Borg can attack twice. We'll trigger each Borg twice to banish two. And so now we have, you know, casually, uh, two 3,500 attack point reinforced human psychic Borgs, each of which that can attack twice. That's it? Oh, no, they're actually 4,000. Whoops. I forgot about how yeah. the uh, these work. So I'll, uh, I'll walk into the Amaryllis. Sure. That's uh, fine. I'll do it again. Let's, <laughs> let's just go to game two. Doesn't even remember that Brain Research Lab gives you an extra normal summon. I'm hey, glad I that I lost it, to the more skilled it? player here. No, I guess you did it, buddy. I guess you did. I still uh, don't know how you convinced me to, to play this, but... Oh, perfect. All right. There's hope. Okay. There's not hope. This is an interesting um, hand. I will set one, two, three. Throw it to you. Anything in standby? All good. All right. Uh, this is a boring hand. I'll just set one and pass. Whoa. Yeah. Does that mean we can actually, like, do something? All right. You didn't think All you right. were going to get to play a game here today, did you? I guess not. Uh, I'll go to main phase one. Uh, I'm going to fire Needlebug Nest. No response to this. Okay, it's mill five. Hmm. Uh, nothing too crazy in the mills there, but also not the worst. All right. Well, uh, I will activate Miracle Fertilizer. Okay, Miracle Fertilizer is fine. Yeah, this card's pretty neat. I'm going to use the effect and bring back Titanial. I will go to battle and I will hit your set. It's Dr. Cranium. Okay. I'm going to go get uh, my So you master. get to go and get a Psychic here. So I'm helping you get to your engine. A little. Then second main, Titanial has to sack a face up plant, 
which is kind of annoying. Uh, you could also just have like a psychokinesis, so that could just make this completely irrelevant. I guess I could just like do that. Yeah, okay, this is fine. Uh, I will set one and I will throw it to you. Stand by. What do you got? Uh, I got heavy storm. Well, I will chain plant food chain targeting Titanial. I've literally never seen this card in my entire life. What Nor is, have I. What is going on so, here? So we've got Botanical so, Girl being eaten by... <laughs> I know what this card is. It's that 1800 attack point monster that increases by like 200 when it destroys a monster by battle. This it is sort awful. of looks like a Preda plant, but like Preda plants came out way no, later. How terrible. So what, so what, yeah. what is the purpose of this? If this card is destroyed by card effect while equipped, mm -hmm. I can target a plant in my graveyard and special summon it. So since your heavy will be popping this, I'll actually just get a free special here. I'm actually just going to chain two plant food chains oh. to the same titanium. Oh, and it's an so, if. It wouldn't even miss timing. This is a great card. Yeah, so we're going to get nuked here. I'm going to bring back the titanium, and this time we get to bring back Botanical Lion as well. Wow. Damn, I've got a lot to chew through here, actually. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyway, Brain Research Lab. <laughs> sure. Uh, normal Mind Master. That's fine. Extra normal Krebins. All right, let's see what we can accomplish here. <laughs> I was going to say, like, it's not that tough. All right, so uh, we're going to go Mind Master effect. We're going to chew through uh, Mind Master, Mind Master, Cranium, Krebins, Cranium, Krebins, Commander, and on all of our power injectors. All right, and we'll activate all those effects. Sure. So, so you get three power injectors here? We are, yes, we are on three power injectors, meaning my monsters are boosted by 1,500. Correct. Uh, next, I'll activate a telekinetic power well. Oh, fuck, yeah? <laughs> grab back two craniums here. Um, sure. Master, master, uh, we'll grab Borg snail. I'll snail targeting Borg. Uh, okay. Okay. So here, I actually have a bit of interaction for all the good it's going to do me. I mean, no, uh, Titanial actually can interact oh, with Snail. Okay. I'm yeah, in. it's like it's something. It's I don't know if it's going to fucking matter, but I mean, I'll 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 try. So I'll sack off Botanical Lion and we'll uh, we'll negate the effect and kill the the monster. So. Okay, so the Borg can only attack once. Uh, we'll, Until you just summon another snail. We'll <laughs> go grab another snail. You might not be dead here is the issue. I'm going to snail targeting the uh, the Borg. Uh, am... What's interesting here is that Titanial is in a once per turn. That is true. Uh... So uh, do I want to use this effect again? Where does this Where does this lead, essentially? So, like, you can Mind Master for either another one of the, the Borgs or another snail, but, like... These things are swole, but they're not, like, swole enough to kill me is the problem. Not of yet. Yeah, if you cut me off here, I think the best I can manage is 235s, which is, like, beatable? Yeah, it, like, it seems beatable. I think that's, like, slightly more manageable. So I actually will sack off Titanial. Titanial's gonna die anyway, so I might as well just, like, cut you off. Okay, this is now very bad. Uh, so I will sack the Mind Master for a reinforced human psychic Borg. Uh, we will go for him twice a piece. Sure. So these are 35... Oh, no, these are 4,000 Borgs, correct? They're 4,000, but, uh, I was kind of hoping that they would... They only have one way. attack, though. <laughs> All right, so I'll, I'll go to combat and attack your set monster. It is Dandelion. Oh, no. Uh, so we are actually pretty safe here. We're gaming. Uh, so now we have reached a very important point in the Mind Master game. I will lose the power injectors here. So these are going to go down to uh, 2,500. They stick there, and I can activate them next turn to potentially kill you. Uh, but this brain research lab has been activated about 10,000 times this turn. <laughs> so if you have a it's mystical space typhoon, I'm... I'm dead as hell. All right. Well, let's will, hope we can get there. I will pass back to you. And so the 500 attack boost actually sticks. That's interesting. It yeah. uh, doesn't go away. All right. We'll draw. All right. So you've got two in hand. So the play here is you can just pop these up again. So I have to worry about that. Uh, you can also just summon more things, which is scary. I am just sadly going to set one and pass. I do not have the out to the brain research lab. And I'm going to go for the Reinforced Human Psychic Borg in hand. Oh, excellent. Another one. Uh, we're going <laughs> to pump them all. 
four, okay. three, four. Okay, so... You have to banish six psychics for this, which you can easily do. Yeah, I am not attached to any of these. Well, if I had known this would go long, I would have kept a tuner. Um, we'll go to combat. So these two are 35s, and this one is a 25. So we'll go the 25 Actually into the crazy. set card. It is Lord Poison. Oh, no. So here... Uh, this sucks because it's like, I would love to get Titanial back, but Titanial will die immediately. So I actually get the Dandelion. I mean, that's pretty good. <laughs> it's buying me time, but it's a good enough. I'll go into the token and into the Dandy, and we are exactly where we were last time. Uh, back to you. Except you are up one Borg, which is scary. One fucking time. Let me force this game three. <laughs> We're trying. I'll send pass. I'm not dead. I'm not dead. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm literally just drawing dead. There's nothing remaining in the deck that does anything. Uh, we'll go one, two. We'll just we'll just do it on this Borg. I, it doesn't get him any closer, and I want to keep guys in grave for telekinetic power well, so I can maybe go into the extra. Uh, we'll go Borg into the set card. It is another Lord. Suck me <laughs> sideways, dude. You're killing me. All right, uh, these two. Okay. I'm <laughs> giving you a lot of time here. I know. I'm trying, buddy. We're trying here. God. All right. Um, I just need I need to kill the brain research lab. That's all I have to do. I will set and I will set. And I will throw it to you. Stand by main. Yep. Ooh. Oh, actually, I'm not setting this. Forget I did that. I'm not doing that. Sure. Battle. Did you get yourself a tuner? Oh, maybe not. Attack. Uh, this is Rigorous Reaver. So we're each going to pitch a card <laughs> from our hand. <laughs> And he uh, loses 500 attack. <laughs> yeah, we'll take a counter off. I'll get rid of my Phoenixian seed. Uh, I will power well. Quick play. Ooh. Uh, we'll go into the dandy. Okay. So dandy triggers. Get a token. Token down. Get a token. And so I'm going to take 35 from this one. You are indeed. Yeah. Holy shit. All right. All right. Second main. We're going to go... Uh, Goyo? God, if Dark Strike Fighter was simply a little bit different. Oh, if he was just a little different. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven stars on Dark Strike Fighter. Four, four. That would be 14 plus 16. That's not remotely close to lethal. Yeah, it was right to get the two twos. Uh, we'll just go Stardust here. No! <laughs> my only you. chance! <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, well, here's Lone Fire. Okay, I'm I, in. I don't... I don't think there's anything in the deck that saves me. Lord but poison. I do have another Lord oh Poison. Oh my god, <laughs> you're killing me here. I'll pass. We're trying. Okay. Um, the other option is I could go like, let me think. Titanial, if I go that, I could kill Stardust. And then your guys are like swole. So 35 over 28 is 7 plus 35 is 42. You have psychics to banish. So I, I do, actually yeah. die if I do the Titanial thing. So yeah, I have to do this. All right, we'll go Stardust in. All right, you already know what's coming. This has been the fucking dandelion <laughs> of the ages here. <laughs> Holy shit. No dandelion has ever worked harder than this one. No, ever. All right, back to you. If only it actually mattered, right? Uh, I don't think this does anything. I have Foolish Burial. A dandelion. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's only one dandelion at this point, sadly. Phenexian keeps you alive, right? I don't even know if it does. I think it depends if you have another monster. I'm going to be real with you. There is one monster remaining in my deck. Oh, okay. Well, that makes me feel slightly better. Well, we play to the outs, right? I will dump the cluster. I will go to end phase. I will banish a plant to resurrect the cluster. Yeah. Have to put it in defense. Otherwise, I'm dead. So... I drew my one monster. <laughs> you fucker! Are you kidding me? I mean, I don't know how I was winning this game <laughs> yeah, this anyway, is, but like, this one looked you gotta bleak. be, of course. One oh in 14. Un Heavy was second from the top, by the way, when I did that dump off Foolish. Which, oh, oh it still is second from the top. Great. Um, This was this was this an experience. You know what? Let's, 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 go to, let's go to game three. I just want to, I was trying to try once. Just one <laughs> fucking time. One time. This is such a neat deck too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, at least Titanial did something, right? Right. Like, at least there was some interaction. It wasn't just a complete blowout. You yeah, know, that was it was a game. We had something going on, I guess. Who could have foreseen the outcome of this game? Not me. 
All right. Well, this was uh, this was I'm a gonna... close one. I it, it was one of our best for sure. Part of me's wondering if I actually am supposed to make you go first, so then you're not able to attack. But like, then you can just like set up. So like, I don't even know if that's a good idea. It is a hard call I'll, to make. I'll go first. Fuck it. I have sure. stuff that interacts with you at least. If I draw it, which uh, apparently last time I could not. Please. Okay. All right. We might be able to get somewhere. I will normal summon Phoenixian Seed. I'm with you. I'll sack it for the Amaryllis. Yep. And I will set two cards and pass the turn. All right. Uh, stand by main. All right. Let's see it. Heavy Storm. Well, this was fun. <laughs> this was a good time. <laughs> I have ways to like interact with this, but like it's not even like very good. Do you have the combo? Uh, I, I in fact do. Yes. Excellent. All right. Well, this was fun. Uh, <laughs> so what I did have, if you didn't have fucking the one of Heavy Storm, uh, I did have the Polynosis, so I could have actually oh. just fucked up Mind Master. Okay. And it's it's good because with Phoenixian Cluster, it actually just comes back then during my next turn. And then I had Plant Food Chain as well. So like these two cards don't work well together because it's like I could have Plant Food Chain to bring back my Amaryllis, but then Polynosis is gone, so you get to full combo. Right. I get Polynosis, but then I have no way to interact with your combo, uh, so then I'm just dead anyway. So the uh, yeah. The other thing I have is Destructotron. Uh, we didn't get to see this the over the course row. of the game. This is insane. Uh, if yeah. you have like mid combo interaction, you just go to Destructotron really early, not once per turn, spend all your life points, blow up the back row and just keep on trucking. Just keep chugging. Yep. Oh, uh, so how do you feel, buddy? Mind master, real That's threat, uh, overhyped. What do you think? So uh, I will I will spoil just a little bit. Um, I, we, I knew this was crazy because uh, we did it in playoffs and in the last episode where we don't have a ban list, everyone was on this deck. You literally can't not be on this deck. This deck is everything that is wrong with Yu-Gi-Oh! at the time. A significant amount of cards that do not have once per turns, a card that lets you cheat the very tiny cost for their effects that is the life points, and... I mean, this shouldn't be a consideration, obviously, but we don't live in a world detached from money. All of this right. is rare or belower. So if you are a child at a regional and you're getting dumpstered by dad, isn't it kind of in your best interest to play a deck like this? Like maybe that's why Konami banned Mindmaster. Maybe they're like, you know what? A deck that's made of rares and lower can't be played because we have the big people pay for their cards. So <laughs> we're gonna ban Mindmaster just out of spite for the budget players. So that oh. way they have to pay 350 for dads. <laughs> for what it's worth, there's no counterplay to this at all. Like, um, it's one of those things where you're like, oh, they have to resolve the effect of a face-up monster, and they have to double summon, and they have to find brain research lab, and MST kills them. So you'd think like, oh, this is a bad, crappy combo that can be destroyed by literally anything under the sun. Um, that's true in a vacuum. But when you remember that um, the Psychics contain cards like Destructotron that can clear the back row before they have to deal with something like this, uh, when you remember that the Psychics have, like, I think at this time their own Omni, uh, when they have the ability to bypass the Double Summit entirely by using something like Emergency Teleport, which is at three during this format, when they can use Mindmaster to start the combo before even committing to a Brain Research Lab so you can Destructo before they have the opportunity to MST, when they can threaten the combo every turn, so if you destroy their Mind Master, you have to kill them on the crackback, or they can telekinetic power well a double monster reborn at quick speed the cards back, it just is impossible. It's just not realistic to expect to not uh, lose to this deck in a two out of three. And what I do... I don't know. Oh. I just don't know what to say. The The tools that this deck was afforded in triple one for one, triple e-call, uh, triple terraforming, triple brain research lab. I, it is just shocking that any of this made it past the dev team. It's funny to me, though, how we actually are showing off two banned cards like from 2009. Obviously, you know, Amaryllis doesn't get banned till like 2019, <laughs> yeah. 2020. But it's funny to see like 
<laughs> how vastly different these two cards operate under yeah. different circumstances. Uh, yeah. What were you doing with Mind Master in 2009? We were just FTKing essentially, right? What were you doing with Phoenixian Cluster Amaryllis? Eh, like it could come back during your end phase. Like that but was no, cool. But no, you don't understand. Right? It comes back <laughs> every turn. I mean, that's nuts, you know? It's nuts, <laughs> right? It's 2200. And guess what? If it attacks, it dies, and you have to resurrect it during the end phase anyway. That's and incredible. it burns your opponent for 800? <laughs> Fuck me. 800 whole life points? Oh. If only there was some way we could abuse that every single, just like in an, some sort of infinite loop, you know? Uh, but that obviously wouldn't happen till uh, 10 years later, <laughs> sadly. But It, it is uh, funny. Both of these cards were hit because they don't have a once per turn anywhere on them. Uh, yeah. But one of them was immediately broken, and one needed a little topologic help. So, guys, that's going to wrap it up for another episode. Let's go ahead and shout out the patrons, as always. A big shout to Shout1317, Moto, Cameron Smith, Tim 0 x 3 Ian Musa, Chaotic People, SJ Winchester, Part 2, Pony Stark, Dan the Man, Hoban, MBT, Play Medulce, Synchro Guy, Ole, Yusuf Asano 5, Mystic Walk, I Ship, MBT, and Simo, Draconic Rockside, Logan, Thomas, Peter Gregory, Thomas Elson, Jordan Coons, Kelvin, Iron Blades, and Purius, Jesse Wood, True Nergasm, Brother Paul, Chris, So David Lou, Skyros, Dylan Hunter, John Two Base, Extremely Vulgar Man, Brody Eastwood, Day Sir, Carlos DT, Flannel Daddy, Hornet, Give Me Speed Roider, Give Me Death, Jonah Messenger, Oh my God, guys, please read your cards. PC Gaming, thanks for the sleeves, Dad. Matthew Brady, Dyer the Egyptian Editor, Max Tom Russell, why read your cards when you can just click buttons? Ben Snatch Shield for Prague 2021, Helios 515, paint French girls like one of your MBTs, Black Acre, say Gage Gang Engage three times fast, the entire state of Indiana, these cards, MBT fans gaming more than COVID, Simpic for Simo, Mark Jackson, Tyler H, Justice for Queen Tiramisu, and Simo's Harem of Sexy Yugi Tubers. Thank you so much for watching the video, and we will see you next time.